Well, listen, I, I think everyone needs to calm down. I, I think we need to tone down the rhetoric. This is already a, a volatile situation. It's like a tinderbox and, and, and throwing, thr throwing lit matches into it. And, and so I think the kind of hyperbole we're seeing, the kind of angry language. You know, yesterday when I released my statement with, with 10 other senators, I had multiple, uh, multiple Democrats uh, s urging that, that, that I should be arrested and tried for the crimes of sedition and treason. Now, now, look, that's not helpful. At a time when this country, when we're pitted against each other, j j just relax and let's do our jobs. We have a responsibility mm. to follow the law. You're a constitutionalist. You wrote an entire book about it. What does the Constitution tell us about who decides who the president should be? What if the commission that you are uh, explaining does form, comes back with actual right. evidence of fraud? Then what happens? Well, th then the results have to be set aside. If there's evidence of fraud and it's substantial and significant enough to ex affect the results in a particular state, then, th then those election results would have to be set aside. And, and, and the states would then have to determine, all right, we have a valid claim here. The evidence supports it. We need to conduct elections consistent with the law. You know, the Constitution gives the responsibility of counting the ballots to the vice president of the United States, Vice President Mike Pence, and to both houses of Congress. And, and, and the framers of the Constitution, when they assigned a task to the Congress, they knew what they were doing. You know, there's some folks who are saying, this is purely a ministerial act. They just have to, you know, count them and walk out and you have no judgment whatsoever. Well, that frankly doesn't make any sense. Why would the framers give to Congress something that could be given to a clerk? The reason they gave it to Congress is they understood there are difficult determinations about what counts as a valid vote. You know, following the 1876 election, um, 10 years later, in, in 1887, Congress passed a statute, the, the statute that we're operating under. It's called the Electoral Count Act. And what it provides is the mechanism for raising an objection. And it says you can raise an objection if the votes were not regularly made uh, by lawfully certified electors. And so in this instance, if you have states that are violating the law, that are committing fraud, th those votes are not being regularly made and those are not lawfully certified electors. And so that Congress's responsibility is to address these claims. Yeah, I can't possibly imagine why people would be calling for the guy who's actively organizing a coup to be arrested for treason. Weird, huh? With an almost inconceivable lack of self-awareness, Ted Cruz is now calling for everyone to tone down the rhetoric. He says that the situation in this country is like a tinderbox and throwing lit matches into it doesn't help anyone. At the same time, he's leading a group of 11 Republican senators in objecting to the results of a free and fair election so as to install the person he wants as president and discard the votes of millions of Americans. But anyway, as he was saying, let's not throw lit matches into a tinderbox. And Cruz goes on, with Maria Bartiromo's help, because apparently one partisan hack wasn't enough here, to explain that his voter fraud commission is necessary to determine if there's evidence of fraud. But here's the thing, there is not. And this issue has already been adjudicated on an almost daily basis over the last two months. The Trump campaign and its allies have brought 60 cases to court across the United States since November 3rd. And at no point did they prove a single instance of fraud. Not that machines were switching votes, not that dead people voted, not that more votes were cast, than registered voters, not that there were tabulation errors, not that ballots were counted more than once, not a modicum of evidence of any of it. In actuality, what there are are allegations of fraud, being perpetuated by the same people who claim that there's fraud without any proof of fraud. Allegations don't mean anything unless there's proof. And there's certainly not a basis on which you can stop a duly elected president from taking power. And if you were wondering just how tortured Cruz's argument is, he's leaning on some obscure statute from 1887. And he's hoping that by virtue of throwing a bunch of legal jargon out there, that no one will challenge the legitimacy of his claims. But if you actually listen to what he says, his argument is completely without merit. He explains that according to this act, you can raise an objection if the votes were not regularly made by lawfully certified electors. And because he's decided that in this instance, there are states that are violating the law, that those votes are not being regularly made, and those are not lawfully certified electors. Only, that all hinges upon an unproven allegation that the law was violated. And the allegation was being made by him and his colleagues. There's not actually been a single credible instance of fraud proven. All we have is this circular argument, where Republicans like 
Ted Cruz and Donald Trump claim fraud repeated on a daily basis and then point to the fact that those accusations of fraud have been made as some sort of proof that there is fraud. So no, Cruz can't just unilaterally decide that votes aren't being regularly made or that electors aren't lawfully certified just because he himself has been out there claiming fraud and he knows that, but his only move is to operate in bad faith. And by the way, the fact that there was no evidence of fraud was even made abundantly clear by Brad Raffensperger himself during yet another perfect call by Trump, where he once again tried to extort someone for his own personal gain in an election. Mr. President, uh, you have people that submit information, and we have our people that submit information, and then it comes before the court, and the court then has to make a determination. We have to stand by our numbers. We believe our numbers are right. But here's the thing, Cruz's objections won't have any material impact on this election. Donald Trump will leave office on January 20th and Joe Biden will be sworn in as the 46th president. But what it will do is further damage our democracy. And what's all this for? Ted Cruz's political ambitions. That's it. He knows that the vast majority of the Republican base supports Trump, and because he wants to be the next Republican president, he knows that he needs to curry favor with those people. And so this is nothing more than a political stunt. Cruz knows this isn't going anywhere. He knows he won't actually overturn the election results. He knows there was no fraud, but he's still doing the whole song and dance anyway because it's not about uncovering the truth, it's about pandering. He's willing to burn democracy down so long as he thinks he'll be better positioned to run for president in 2024. Because just like Trump, all Ted Cruz cares about is Ted Cruz. And yet the collateral damage for this self-serving stunt is that a sizable percentage of Americans no longer trust the very institutions that govern us. Thanks to people like Ted Cruz, Americans don't trust our electoral system or governors or secretaries of state or the courts, all because those institutions committed the cardinal sin of acknowledging reality and not kowtowing to Trump's despotic fever dream. And while Trump was too ham-handed to actually manage to successfully steal anything, it'll still be easier for the next Republican who tries to undermine the election results, and there's a good chance that Cruz is banking on exactly that. The simple fact is that if Ted Cruz had a single bone in his body that cared more about our democracy than his own personal ambition, he would recognize that what he and Trump are doing has no upside and will only further plunge this country into the unrest that he himself is pretending to push back against in this very interview. But as we all know, that's not the case. And so instead, 350 million Americans will suffer because he's trying to launch another failed presidential bid by appealing to Trump's brainwashed base. Because apparently, the only way to win on the right anymore is to have nothing but disdain for this country and the people in it. While you're here, please check out my podcast, No Lie with Brian Tyler Cohen. I take a deep dive into the top stories of the week, and I also interview major players in the world of politics, like Kamala Harris, Adam Schiff, Nancy Pelosi, Pete Buttigieg, Katie Porter, Al Franken, Cory Booker, Jamie Harrison, Mary Trump, and many more. Again, that's No Lie with Brian Tyler Cohen, available anywhere you listen to podcasts.